All right, we are going to look at chemistry page 1129. Finally! Wow, 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 wow. By the way, does it look like I just came in from shoveling snow? Because I did. Um, here in February, in uh, the year 2021 in Pennsylvania, we got almost 30 inches of snow. And so we had to cancel school. <clears throat> and I have been busy shoveling, but now I have time. So even though I'm in my jeans and flannel shirt, I thought I'm going to use this time to get this video ready for you, okay? Just for you. I'm telling you, this is like the toughest thing I have seen so far in this chemistry course. That does, I haven't worked through the whole course, so I don't know if there's tougher things coming. I do know that in the Apologia Science course that I use here in our school with my students, this particular concept is covered as an optional topic in the last chapter. And I um, always run out of time, and we never get to that chapter. <laughs> but this is pace number nine, so we need to do it, okay? And I'm here to help you. So uh, you really need to, well, first of all, right at page one, it talks about the definition of oxidation. Wow. Oxidation, we just need to kind of memorize this. I, my first thought was it has something to do with oxygen, right? Oxidation, oxygen. Actually, no, it has nothing to do with oxidation. We have to get in our head that the term oxidize or oxidation means that an element is losing electrons. So as a reactant, it has a certain number of electrons, but then when it ends up on the product side in a, re in a compound, it has fewer electrons. Okay, so it's given up electrons. Losing electrons is oxidation. Now you would think it would make sense reduction. That'd be easier to remember, right? Reduction is losing electrons, but no, it's not that easy. <laughs> reduction means gaining electrons. Woohoo! So a little bit of a mind game here, all right? <clears throat> I can't think of a really good way to help you keep it straight, except that it's the opposite of what you think. So reduction is gaining electrons, not losing. And oxidation has nothing to do with oxygen. It only means we're losing electrons. Now, if you uh, look on page one of your piece, on page two, they kind of walk through what that looks like. And uh, make sure you look even here at the notes on the side page. And then they talk about what's called the electron transfer method. And I'm going to walk you through um, helping you set up problem number 29, okay? But before you do that, I really want you to study example 9-1 and 9-2 on pages 4 and 5, all right? So read over those examples. Look at the steps. There are six steps. Try to wrap your head around what they're doing with each of those. And uh, if you haven't already done that, then I want you to stop the video and read through that, think it through, and then come back and we'll walk through this example together. Okay, we'll walk through helping you set up number 29 together. Here we go. All right, so this problem tells us in the pace that we are, I'm looking at the pace here, uh, use the electron transfer method to balance the equation involving the reaction of aluminum with hydrochloric acid, which I know is HCl, and it's going to produce aluminum chloride, which aluminum has... Um, an oxidation number of 3, and chlorine is negative 1. So positive 3, negative 1, that's why I know it's AlCl3, and then hydrogen. Okay? Well, what's the first step? Let's see. The first step is we need to, uh, we wrote the, the skeleton equation. Now we're supposed to write the oxidation numbers. Okay? So I'm looking up here at aluminum, and I know that that is positive 3, Hydrogen is positive 1, chlorine is negative 1, so positive negative balances. Here we have positive 3, chlorine is negative 1, but I do have 3 of them, so it balances out. And then hydrogen is 0. Okay? <clears throat> Alright, so I made a mistake already. Um, when... <laughs> When aluminum, when an element is by itself, kind of like I did here, when an element is by itself, it is zero. All right, so that was my first mistake, so I'm helping you not make that mistake. Here we go. <clears throat> Which of these, aluminum 
or hydrogen. They both change, right? Aluminum goes from zero to positive three. Chlorine stays the same, negative one, negative one. Hydrogen's going from positive one to zero. So which one of those is losing electrons? Okay. Did you say aluminum? Let's think about it. If aluminum has the same number of electrons as protons, then it's zero. But if it gives up some electrons, if it gives up some negative charges, then it ends up being positively charged. Does that make sense? It's like a little pre-algebra problem. You get rid of some negatives, and so you're left more positive than what you were when you started at, at zero. So let's write down the oxidation equation is aluminum, zero, plus three electrons. And what that means is that the aluminum is giving up. I should put a three in front of this. It's giving up three electrons and <clears throat> Um, and again, I wrote that down wrong, so let me start over. We're starting with aluminum at zero. Over here, we have positive three, but here's where the three electrons are, okay? So the negative three, the three times negative one electrons added to the positive three, so positive three plus negative three equals the zero, okay? Now, so that was giving up electrons, lost electrons. The electrons from here ended up on the other side. Now we're going to do the reduction. So I'll just call this red. All right, so what's the red equation? That would be hydrogen. All right, so hydrogen is positive one, and then it must be gaining one electron to become h2 zero well actually what happens here is because i have two hydrogens it's h2 then i need to put a two in front of here and put a two in front of here so i have two hydrogens each giving up one electron okay or gaining actually gaining an electron so that the positive one plus the negative charge ends up being the zero all right, now here's the thing, step number, technically this is step number four, I think. Um, we need to balance the fact that here we're talking about three electrons, and here we're talking about two electrons, so that we've got to get the number of electrons the same. So it's kind of like using distributive property. I want to have a, six electrons, so that I have six electrons on this side, six electrons on this side. So if I multiply all of these, kind of like distributive property, multiply them all by 2, and I get this. And then over here, I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So I have 6 plus 6 electrons yields um, 3, sorry. Multiplying by 3, lost track of what I was doing, 3 H2. All right, so we have six electrons on the product side here, six electrons on the negative side here. So we have the same number of electrons being transferred during this reaction. Now we're going to take these coefficients, the, uh, the six and the three, and, the and bring those up to this root equation up here. All right, so let's see what we have with the aluminum. I need to put a 2 in front of the AL, okay? And the HCl, so that means I need to have a 6 in front of the HCl. We're not going to have to worry about this, all right? We're kind of ignoring this part. And now that yields, we're going to put a 2 in front of the ALCl3. And then the 3 here tells me that I have to put three in front of the H2 here, okay? 
So the three came up to this. This two affected the aluminum, but that basically it means that this whole compound, we have two of those. All right. So now we have to look at it and ask ourselves, and I forgot to add the L here, sorry, is this equation balanced or is one of the um, elements not affected? Um, and all of a sudden I'm wondering, did I even turn this on? Oh, yes, we are on. Okay, good. Whew. Don't get old. My birthday. I'm turning 59 this week, and uh, all of a sudden I had this thought, what if I forgot to turn the camera on? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Let me look at my cheat sheet here, and... Wow! Yippee, yippee! So, in your pace, <clears throat> step number six says... Adjust the coefficients of the non-redox members to balance both sides. Well, guess what? For this equation, I think we're balanced. Two aluminum, two aluminum. Six hydrogen, six hydrogen. Six chlorine, and I have two times three, six chlorine on this side. So, this is now balanced. I don't have to go any further. And um, I heard... I, really didn't leave much for you to do except copy it down, but make sure you study the steps that we went through, okay? In your head as you're doing it, let's think about again what oxidation means, that's the key part here, oxidation reduction. Oxidation means that an element is losing electrons, so to go from this side to this side, it gave off electrons, and so the aluminum on this side has fewer electrons, and that's why it shows up on the product side as sitting there by itself. It kind of gave it off. Whereas with the reduction, it's gaining electrons. So the hydrogen over here was positive one. So it had to gain electrons in order to become neutral. Don't worry. If this feels confusing, all right, I understand. Now, let me give you a little tip. Um, you can be happy about this. We are going to do another problem of this type and I'm going to make a separate video just for that, okay? Just it, try to do it on your own first, okay? Try to do problem number, what is it, 30, without my help. But then if you get stuck, come back and we'll, I'll make a quick video for number 30 and we'll help you with that. But let me give you a, a happy tip. On the checkup, you do not have to do a problem like this. I guess that's good. The sad thing is, on the PACE test, I mean the self-test, there is one like this. So, we do need to know this electron transfer method, and I did look ahead to the PACE test, and I do see that there is a problem um, just like this on the PACE test. So, don't say, oh, I don't have to know how to do this. I would definitely say write all of these steps down and before you make a part of your study guide, and before you do the PACE test for this PACE, Take this problem right here, number 29, and uh, study all of what we did here, the numbers, how we changed everything. And notice that step number six, we didn't have to do anything. So you can just write not needed or whatever when you get to that last, that last step F. All right, so hopefully that helps you. And um, this is a tough one. Don't feel bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a video right now for number 30 and uh, see if we can get you over a hump with that one.